there, this is the fifth lesson in a series of lessons on the art fundamentals. Those being the art fundamentals that I chose to, to cover everything that you can put together in a painting without starting to look at the principles of art. Uh, the six I chose were line, tone, shape, colour, texture and composition. And this is lesson five, uh, lesson five on texture. Now, texture, you can split into two areas. You can split into actual texture, where you actually build up a texture on the paper or on the canvas, and also implied texture, where you're actually trying to create an illusion of texture within an image. So actual texture, it can be built up by sticking things on the paper, using materials like um, gesso. This is this is Liquitex gesso, and uh, this one it's for priming surfaces specifically. But when you actually put it onto a surface, those ridges that you can see on there the gesso will stay like that and will stay with that texture within there. So you could um, have the texture moving out in a spiral and that texture, if I catch it in the light, will stay there. So if you want to do a textured surface, Use things that are actually made to make a textured surface. Liquitex do some, uh, De La Rowney do some, where you, you can actually build, I think it's like texture beads or something like that, that you can put into uh, a primer to actually give the surface a bit of texture. If you're using thicker paint, you can actually use the, uh, the, the actual paint and paint it in, a, um, in pasto which is building up really thick paint on the surface. Any, anything that's already got a texture, you can either imprint it or do a rubbing of it or um, glue it onto the surface and prime over the top of it. This is all actual texture. What we're gonna ha have a look at now is implied texture. We're gonna start with texture and line. Lines, depending on how you draw them, how far away from each other they are, how close together they are, they all give different textures. So even stippling is a texture. Um, dashing really quickly gives a different texture really straight thought, uh, thought out lines will give an, 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 a different texture and all these will you can use as tools to create your images. When you look at line and texture you may say well that you could use that as fur or you could use that as sand and you can but actually you're limiting yourself to how realistic you can make fur when you're actually using the line to describe the fur. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to start looking at texture and tone. When the light hits the surface and comes back off that surface, it's affected by any dips or bumps or hollows in that surface. It will create highlights and shadows as it bounces off. When working in with a pencil or a pen, show those dots as grains or something like that. Each grain would also have, say the light was coming in from this side, it would have a light side and a dark side. So you're shading the background and leaving a few whiter areas where the grains would be. So as you can see, I've started to show there, I'm actually uh, creating a grainy effect by shading the 
bits behind the grains rather than actually dotting the grains. Again, to actually get the spring area standing out, you shade the area behind it to make the coils stand out. So as you can see, this is actually taking a lot longer shading the background rather than actually drawing the image but you get a more believable texture right the next one um the edges i don't know it could be the edges of a sprocket or something like that or um the edges of a, a cog you know a surface of a cog or tiles or something But again, it's where are you expecting the light to hit? And where will there be a shadow line? So if the light's coming down here, I'm thinking the light will catch that top edge. And where it goes into the next one, there'll be a, a shadow. It starts to become even more believable. And this last one, fur, grass, anything like that, fur, uh, any, anything that's got overlapping dashes that you'd describe with lines like this. Um, the best way to draw this is not to draw the fur. If pe people tend to sort of like think, right, well, if I'm drawing fur, I'll do each one like that and get a really good texture. Or if you're doing grass, And that's fine if the grass is, is backlit or with the fur, if it's got a very, uh, it's, it's a, a light coat with a um, dark tips to the fur. But when you're doing, um, especially grass, when you're doing something where the, the grass blades at the front are going to be lit, and the ones behind are going to be in the dark. What you want to start doing is actually sort of put in where you think a few might go very lightly. And actually shade the gaps in between where you'd expect the shadows of the grass to be. And as far as grass goes, that's looking a bit more believable than sort of that. Okay, so we've got texture and line, texture and tone. We're going to go on to texture and colour. And it will actually, um, this technique will make a lot more sense when we start going into paint and colour, where you can put a lighter tone on top of a darker tone. Texture's um, easier when you've got three layers. You've got a mid-tone, a darker tone for the really deep shades, and then a lighter tone on top for the highlights. So you remember from the last lesson in colour, primary colours red, yellow and blue. And as I was saying, you can mix red and yellow to make orange, red and blue to make purple, yellow and blue to make green. So I'm just going to quickly do that. So I've got the secondary colours mixed, purple, green and orange. And then we started saying, well, to mix browns, you can mix the complement, complementary colours, the opposite colours. And that works um, because Brown is pretty much made when you get along the orange side of a line that goes through the colour wheel. The closer towards blue you get, the more likely you're going to get um, a grey, especially if you mix it with white. I'll pop some white on when you make a tint of the colour. When you're closer to the orange side of things, red, orange, yellow, 
you're going to get more of a browner colour. And when you get more to the blue side, you're going to get more of a greyer colour. In the centre, with red, yellow and blue mixed together, you make black in pigment. In light, you make white. In pigment, you make black. If it's slightly brown, a bit more blue will tend to take it black. If it's slightly grey, a bit more red or orange will take it black. So when you're doing, the, the whole point of me showing you this was when you're doing tone in colour, when you start off with a, um, a, a paint, painting a colour, you then want to think about how you're going to make that colour darker to do the dark tones. So say we're going to start with like a purpley red colour. Looks quite dark on that camera. I'll show you on that camera and if I get it closer you can see there okay so the first thing we need to do is put down a darker version of that to get a darker version we're going to take it closer to black to get it to go f closer to black we need to add a little bit of something from over here it's making it more of a, um, a browner color but it's it from where you ever you are over here if you take it towards the black which is all of them mixed together you get a darker version of it so in this case it's it's a um, like a ready brown then you've got that red and the purpley red that I want the colour to be there. If I was to paint that straight over to that, um, I, I, the, the colour behind would start to change it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the pattern in white first. So I've dried that off and I'm now going to use that ready purple colour. for my mid-tone. This is sort of just how to get, how to use darks and lights to create texture. So now that um, I've got that mid-tone in and you can see it's already starting to look a bit textured. I'm then going to use a highlighted version of it. So I'll we'll take the purpley red and I'm just going to put in a little bit of white to make a tint of it. There's two ways to make tints of a colour, adding a bit of white or adding a bit of yellow. So if you're mixing something from this side, don't add white to make it lighter. Try and lighten it with a bit of yellow first maybe a touch of white but try lighting it with a bit of yellow first so it doesn't make it go all cold and chalky so there's your texture in color the next one i'm going to do is the stipply sand so first of all on my color wheel i'm going to make a sandy color well between orange and yellow maybe a little bit towards a brown so uh, or black just add a little bit of there we go so that's the hue that uh, i want and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a big dollop of white so that's going to be my mid sandy color and I'm going to start mimicking the texture already with how I'm applying it. I'm going to use a different brush. See, I, I keep all the old horrible brushes that have flared out and gone all funny for this particular reason. I can... Stipple the paint on 
with that mid tone then I'm going to take that colour there that we mixed there's a little bit more of it left there and I'm going to put a whole splodge of that in to make a darker version which is basically adding blue because it, this is already made of the red and yellow this bit so I'm just adding a bit more red and yellow and blue but it's made a darker version it's going to stipple in the shadows like so and then a lighter version of it so I don't want to be just adding white to this because this was my main colour with more blue I want to get that main colour again and add white and that will be my highlight colour stipple that on and of course depending on how long you want to take on this you can really do more darks and more lights but do your darks first and then move towards doing the light bits like so so this next one the line one i think i'm going to do that in like a bluey gray color so if i want a gray a bluey gray it's going to be closer towards the black so if i take blue and add a little bit of the orange just a tiny drop of orange it takes it more towards the black there we go and I'm, this time I'm just going to do a flat coverage in the direction of the lines then I'm going to do the shadows the, take the main colour, take it towards the black and then light side is going to be nice and cold so just add lots of straight white because white will make it cooler anyway Just adding in the highlights now. There we go. And the last one, I'm going to do the grass. The grass. Going from dashes to hopefully the texture of grass. Starting with the green. Just, I'm just going to use fresh green as the base colour and I'm going to put, put it on in grass texture like I would have done there in the line. As you can see this is quite a translucent paint showing a lot of the white through it and you may think well that that looks really grassy already that looks like that's fantastic with the work that the overlapping translucent paints doing not bad at all but if you imagine a whole painting of just that that's not going to work so being able to change the tones in your grass whilst keeping a grass texture is actually quite important. So I'm going to do the same thing again, starting with the green to make a, a, a darker value, a shade of that to take it back to black. We're going to actually add the red. There we go. So that's a darker version 
of the lighter green. And don't forget these are all just my ways of doing it. There are, you know, there's countless other ways. And then once you've learnt them all, make up your own way as well. All the rules are there to be played with. And then a highlight version. Take the green. If I just added white to this, it goes a bit like a minty green. So I might use that on a few bits. But what I also might do is add a little bit of the yellow just to keep it as a green rather than a mint colour. And there we go, grass texture in colour. So we've done texture with line, texture just with tone and texture with colour. There we go, bring that up. Texture with colour. So one thing to remember is, depending on how the light is hitting the surface and the actual state of the surface, if the surface is a shiny surface, you're going to have lots of sharp light reflections. If it's a matte, dull surface, all your reflections are going to be very, very soft. Uh, another thing to remember with texture. A texture is born when a light hits a surface. Parts of it are in highlight, parts of it are in shadow. Depending on which bits are highlighted and which bits are in shadow will describe the texture to you. There's only one thing left today and that's questions and answers. Questions and answers. Okay, questions and answers today. This one's from Jackie. This is about skin tones. What are your tips on getting skin tones right for all possible skin? So when you are painting realistic skin, you want to account for the layers underneath. Sometimes it's a good idea to paint like a, an, a, an under layer of skin and then paint the surface of the skin on top of it to give that layer uh, thickness to the skin. As far as colour, how do you get the right colour of skin? Um, I thought it would be a good one to go with because of what we've just been doing here. So to get a skin colour of any tone, if you looked at a flat skin tone, it would be anywhere in this area. Mixing purples, reds, oranges, yellows, blacks, together and then adding a tint. So if you were to do quite a dark skin here and take it towards black by adding the green. To, so you just keep playing until you say, yeah, that's, that's the skin tone I'm after. You might have someone with um, more of an orangey brown Or you may have someone with add a tint, add the white to see how it goes as a tint to yellow with just a touch of. So all these colours are around this side and then you add a little bit of a white to tint them. What you can start to do then is start to get lighter and darker versions of these. In, in, sh in the shadows of very dark skin you can get like really beautiful purple colours. To make those even darker it's adding the green, not with the um, white added, add the greens. To get darker with the orangey tones and the mid-brown tones, add more of the blue. 
for your shades. And on the paler, more yellowy side, to get shades, you're going more with the purple. So when you're trying to get highlights and shades of a certain skin colour, work out whereabouts on the red to yellow your starting brown is closest to, uh, or even a dark purple for really ebony skin. And then take it darker to make shadows using the opposite side of the colour wheel. And then you can tint it by using white. Try not to tint your shadows to make the light. Try and tint the original colour that you made to make the light. So if I took this on a piece of paper and had that as my underneath colour, also remembering that the underneath colour is a little bit darker, it can be influenced by blue. So let's have a little bit more of the blue side on there. And it can also be influenced by red if it's got a high um, blood flow underneath it and then the overpainting of the lighter colour gives more of a translucency to the skin you can see the red underneath and the blue underneath the dark skin tone and the light skin tone. Depends what's underneath as to the colour that's going to come on top. So you can play with the underpainting to get um, tints and um, different areas like veining and things like that underneath the skin. You can play with that too. So. There you go, Jackie. Uh, maybe a few tin tips on mixing skin colours. Thanks very much for that one. And next week, we're going to be looking at composition. It's the last of the six lessons. Um, and after that, it will be uh, a bit of a reveal for this channel. But I'll be able to tell you more about that two weeks time, hopefully. Right. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week. Bye.